Oh, hi, I'm Ed Seidowitz. I'm going to do a tool demonstration. I have a few slides to set up the demonstration, and then we'll go right into the demonstration. So, some of you, I do know some of you here, know that I'm very involved in the unified modeling language and in modeling in general. Modeling used to be really big in the old days, when before Splash was Splash, when it was Oopsla. It's not so big these days. The unified modeling language is not so big these days. People still know about it, but it is, has a number of issues when we do modeling the way that it had been done traditionally. Let me adjust this. So the old way of doing modeling is that somebody who was an architect, a modeler, a system analyst would do a model and give the model to the developers. The developers would then code software based on the models. Well, maybe they'd base it on the models. Maybe they'd find out the models didn't quite do what they were supposed to do. They'd change it. Maybe they'd give feedback to the architects, but maybe not. So we had the classic problem where you had these pictures, you had the actual running software, and unless you had a lot of di discipline, the pictures didn't stay updated, and then they became worse than useless. What I've been uh, doing a lot of work in lately is what's known as executable modeling. So let's say we have this problem with models. People like the idea of doing the pictures and having a diagrammatic presentation or having some design or thought before you do the software. But the problem was you ended up with artifacts that didn't stay compatible. Well, one of the ways to deal with that is not to do the models anymore once you do the code and focus on the code. And that's what's popular these days is code-centric development. Really though, when you look at the overall design and architecture of a system, the code is not really the best way to present it. Sure, it's there. But most programming languages, that's not the best way to present the overall big picture architecture of a large system. Well, suppose the models themselves, however, had semantics and were executable. Well, then you could do model-based development, but that could be really your primary artifact. The idea is the developers create fully executable models. Those models are validated in a development environment, and then you've got your feedback loop on the models themselves. When you've got the models tested and validated, then you can deploy them in a production environment. Now this is not a new idea. This has been popular actually in the real-time community since at least the 1980s. Folks like uh, Sally Schler and Stephen Miller, uh, Harrell State Charts, the um, object time, uh, real-time object-oriented method, all had this idea of executable models. It's now becoming really popular in the model base, at least in this area, this model simulation loop, for model-based system engineering. Um, and there are a number of domain-specific scientific and engineering tools that do this. The problem has been that they are all different. They're all proprietary. A lot of the software ones started using UML. So you've got Schleer Miller executable UML, you've got state charts in UML, you have uh, UML RT from Room, but UML didn't have a common semantics for executability. So even though they were called UML, it's sort of like saying that C Sharp, C++, and Java are all just small variants of C. Uh, what has happened over the last few years, though, is a development of a set of standards at the Object Management Group, which standardizes UML, around formal semantics for UML and executable modeling. This started with this idea of foundational UML. We have now built on top of that precise semantics for composite structure, basically components, ports, and connectors. Uh, we just finished state machines and looking to work next on precise semantics of time. That provides us now with not just a syntactic commonality in UML, but actually a semantic commonality, actually a formally based semantic commonality. You notice in the middle here, there's also this thing called an action language. Everybody thinks of UML as a primarily a graphical language, and that can be useful in a lot of situations for presenting views of a design. But when you get down to executability and detailed behavior, graphics, as I'll show in a moment, is not necessarily the best way to do that we actually have a standard textual language now that can be used to represent UML models, and in particular can be used to represent detailed behavioral actions within the context of those models. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how we've integrated that into an existing UML, commercial UML tool, the Magic Draw tool. Uh, so, what I'm going to talk about is this integration, the plugin into this Magic Draw tool. This is one of the leading UML tools. It's been around for, I think, 20 years now. 
uh, done by a company called No Magic that has in it a ca uh, capability to display all sorts of UML models. But they've also now implemented an add-on to that called Cameo Simulation Toolkit that lets you actually simulate these models using FUML semantics and other, so it's not just uh, FUML does object orientation, does UML activity diagrams, they also have the capability to do state machines and a number of other things built on top of that. What we're working on now is adding to that the ability to do this ALF language. Now you notice ALF actually stands for Action Language for FUML. But even though it came from an acronym, the official spelling is capital A, lowercase l, lowercase f. And there's a reason for that. Um, that's because this is sort of our informal mascot. How many of you remember this guy? There you go. Don't tell the network we're using. That. But so the ALF plugin then adds this additional capability into the Cameo Simulation Toolkit. So let me show you what I'm, actually this, I, I put these images right, this is actually the Magic Draw tool here in their freeform diagram um, just to make it easier for me to switch around. So I'm going to stay within this tool, I'm now going to make it look like a UML tool. So not much in this model. I'm going to show you the basic idea here is that we want to be able to, in the context of UML model, actually execute behavior. Now UML, some of you may know, has an actually pretty complete behavioral modeling capability in terms of activity diagrams that can be tacked onto object-oriented models and state machine models. Um, activity diagrams aren't always the easiest thing to draw in detail. What we want to be able to do is something really simple, and the way the ALF language works is that it is formally specified as being equivalent to certain activity models. So it picks up the semantics, the actual semantics of data flow activity modeling. And what the plugin does is it actually implements that for you. So for instance, I'm going to create an element here, which is an activity. I'm going to start with, of course, hello world. So that's a little bit small. Um, I don't know if I can make it a much whole lot bigger, but see if you can see this. So the ALF language, you can see that little bit right there. The resolution is not really great. I really wanted to use HDMI. It would have looked a lot better in HDMI. That actually says right line, hello world. Right line is I'm going to trip over this. I'm going to fall on my face. But uh, what I've done is I put this into the box there. This is an actual editing window. And the idea is we're trying to get the kind of capabilities that you'd expect from an IDE. We're not entirely there yet, but you know, even here you could see it was doing syntax checking uh, on the fly. It does things like um, if I misspell something that it doesn't recognize, it uh, gives me the typical flyover error messages. And if I hit save here, you might notice that this just created a whole bunch of stuff under this hello world. In fact, what it's done, there's no diagram here, but I can create a diagram. If I create a diagram here, you can see what it's actually done is compiled this behind the scenes into um, an activity diagram. The auto layout isn't the greatest here, but uh, other than Oh boy, that really is. I don't know if there's any way we can get better quality than that. I can't see. I'm going to have to uh, adjust this. Let's see if I can. I knew there was going to be some AV problem, but you can't really see that very well, can you? Um, where's my display? Now it's going to be small, but yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Now it's going to be sharp, but hard to see anything. All right. So what it's done now is, um, all right, it's a little better. You can see that. It has an activity diagram here that basically takes the value of hello world and it feeds it to this call of a right line. So that's been generated behind the scenes. 
Um, and it's done things like name resolution. So that write line is actually a library routine that is in these libraries that are behind, that are loaded here behind the scenes. Right, so that's actually loaded in up here in the FUML library and the ALF standard says these are imported in automatically. Um, so it did the name resolution for that within the namespace in the UML tool. So we've got an integration into the naming in the UML tool. We generate, it actually adds the activity model in there and that activity model is actually now uh, executable. So if I go and say I want to simulate this, this is why I don't like VGA. Let's do that. Um, and you can see it printed out, hello world there. So, not too exciting, but that just shows you the idea that uh, is behind this here. Um, let me show you a couple other little more exciting things, hopefully, while I still have time for this. Uh, so what I want to show you here is this is the reason why you want to use a graphical diagram instead of a uh, activity diagram. Clients of Cameo Simulation Toolkit actually do a lot of very sophisticated simulation and models, especially in the system engineering environment, and they actually create diagrams like this. Th these kind of diagrams are very detailed, read structural features, but they integrate directly with the model. You can read. What this does is it basically uh, is in a ordering model. It takes an order and takes the line items and it looks for a, pro a given product and deletes a line item for that product. Right, here's the ALF code, which is, looks C-like by intent. Basically it says for item in this dot light items, look for the certain product, remove it from the light items, adjust the total amount and destroy the item. That is equivalent to that. It's a lot easier to type that and get that right than doing that. The problem is, in UML before the textual language, it was like, as I put it, programming Java in bytecode. The language built in the low level stuff as the primary way to do it instead of building in the high level stuff. So ALF adds back in that high level stuff. So that example is actually from a larger example. Let's see if you can actually see this here. Um, so here we've got an order class that has a number of operations on it. And each one of these classes, if I go over here and look at an order, I can look at the ALF code for that. I can expand that out. This is really not very. All right, order. So what that says is this is creates an order, but you notice here that it knows about that association. So unlike, yeah, there are a lot of tools that will do this in Java, that will do it in um, JavaScript, you can do that within here, but there isn't a direct interface UML. This is completely integrated with the idea of UML, creating links and association. Uh, so, and it also will let you do things such that, if I look here at remove product, I showed that to you before, that example before of remove product. But underneath this, the semantics is actually data flow semantics. This does it in a little more data flow kind of way. It looks like OCL, but it's actually uh, data flow. What it says is take the line item, select the item, find the one where the product is equal to the given product, remove all the items where that selection happened, adjust, reduce, uh, adjust the total amount by doing this reduce action, add up uh, the value of all the items that were deleted, and then destroy all the items. And this actually maps into underneath an activity model that carries that out. The integration here, again, is if I change a name here, if I change this to items, then it immediately identifies those things that that depended on. Um, it is still not automatically updating that for you. There's some question on whether you want to update it. Um, but it does identify that now I have, uh, have to correct that and 
you know, I have a typical flyover that says that. One of the things that's still to be implemented in future directions is uh, quick fixes and uh, syntactic auto completion. Um, that requires a little bit more sophistication in the parser. Uh, the other thing here is that this integration also happens in terms of state machines. So if you look at this state machine here, um, the state machine basically gives the behavior of an order as an active class. You start by submitting a charge, you then send that to a credit card to see if the credit card uh, can pay for it. Uh, either the charge is denied or the charge is approved. These are all events. This can actually run concurrently. The interesting thing is, is that again, the ALF is connected into the whole event passing system in UML. So when I write here, this dot customer dot charge approved, this is actually sending to the customer a signal, the customer interface object, a signal saying that the charge is approved. And those signals from the credit card interface come back here. So again, this is all executable. And let me just quickly show this. I'm running out of time. Um, I have a little test set up here. The test itself is set up with some uh, uh, ALF code, if I can actually get that selected. So what this does is actually create some products. So it, this is, ALF is a nice little scripting language for doing tests also within your executable UML model. Um, and it actually then uh, adds the product to the order. The order starts up its behavior. So if I actually run that, uh, what I'm going to get here is, so I don't have a fancy UI on this. What I've got is, uh, I didn't fix some of the problems, but, um, so I can actually trigger the submit charge if I look at, this actually is running now. It's in this waiting state. If I submit the charge, then it comes down here. It's actually now, if I look under the credit card, the credit card is now waiting to see whether, right, it's in the verifying state. I don't actually have a real credit card verification, so I'm just going to say that the charge was approved. And now it's being shipped because over here this is actually going to the awaiting delivery state. So this is actually running in the actual ALF code you can think about. You don't even have to think about the activity modeling behind it. You think about it as if it was running. But it isn't actually being interpreted. It's actually compiled into the activity models. The activity models are being run in the context of this overall execution engine. Um, just very quickly, the uh, basic idea here is the way that's integrated. If you can see this. Uh, we have the basic UML tool which handles the inter interface, the model management, and the UML meta model. The Cameo Simulation Toolkit is a plug-in into that that provides a general simulation framework that's ultimately based on FUML. The ALF plugin actually is an interface between MagicDraw, plugs into MagicDraw, but the actual work is done by an open source ALF reference implementation. So this part of the implementation is proprietary. This is actually available open, open source. It actually does the parsing, it implements the mapping. So this is, OMG does not actually formally support reference implementations, but this was actually the implementation that was used in order to develop the standard. So this is directly based on the standard, and this plugs it into MagicDraw and provides the UI capabilities. So where are we on this? Right now, the ALF reference implementation actually has been around since the beginning of the standard. Uh, we just finished ALF 1.1, which was a major update to the ALF standard. Uh, the version 1.1.0 of the reference implementation has just been released. It's actually been tracking the work on ALF 1.1, but 
just got it packaged and released. The ALF plugin for Magic Draw, there was a pre-release version that didn't have as nice a UI as I, interface as I was presenting that's actually available for Magic Draw 18.5 which was the current version. There's a beta version, that's what I just demoed for the Magic Draw 19.0 beta which I was hoping would be available by now but it has been pushed a little bit. Magic Draw 19.0 beta should be available in a few weeks, in 20 November. Uh, and the GA version of the plugin will be for the GA version of Magic Draw 19.0 which will be available first quarter of 2018. Uh, future directions, well, there's the typical text completion, quick fixes, uh, some refactoring, that sort of IDE kind of capabilities. Also, remember one of the goals here was to have production code generation. We don't have that yet. MagicDraw has some of that capability. Uh, Lieber Lieber, an Austrian company that actually does code generation out of MagicDraw and other tools, is actually working on generation from FUML to production real-time code and that will complete that next, the, the full being able to simulate your models and then be able to generate to production code. Um, and we're also implementing the idea that you can use this as a serialization mechanism, a human readable serialization mechanism rather than XMI to import and network complete models in ALF because there's actually a structural modeling representation in ALF also as well as the behavioral modeling. All right, a little bit over, but thank you.